we're going to measure a whole bunch of common RC connectors in milliohms. I'm starting on the wiring of the VESC and that involved digging out my collection of RC connectors and I realized something. When I first started this electric turbo journey, I actually spent some time looking for YouTube videos or any information I could find on the different common RC connectors and what their internal resistance is. Obviously in our application, we wanna make sure we have as few losses as possible and I couldn't find anything and I didn't have a milliohm meter at the time. Now I do and now we're gonna test them. A regular multimeter is not gonna work. You actually need a milliohm meter. It takes four conductors. I'm sure you can Google and find out exactly how that works. That's not the point of this. Let's get right to the testing. So there is a 20 milliohm range on this meter, but that can kind of drive you a little bit crazy. So let's stick with the 200 milliohm range. Now this is a process that does take a little bit of effort and takes some checking back and forth because we are talking about resistances that are incredibly minute. And this thing will drift over time, so you have to make sure that you zero it out every time. So let's find ourselves a happy point. That seems like a pretty solid 1.8 milliohms. So let's zero that out. All right, so let's start with these Dean's connectors. These are notoriously like the crappiest of the connectors, in my opinion anyway. I don't like how they connect. Uh, all of these connectors are gold-plated, and the thing about gold is it never tarnishes. So at least you shouldn't have to worry about that. But let's, again, start with the Deans. Appears to be holding around a 3.5. And then this side. Uh, 1.4. So this one is inconsistent, obviously. 3.5 and 1.4. So that's what I think the problem with these connectors are. So let's check out an EC3. Uh, again, make sure the meter hasn't drifted. And it seems to be fairly stable. Yep. So let's plug... And I'm just going to use the innards of these uh, EC series connectors just to make the testing easier. Okay, so that's connected. Let's clamp it in there. And clamp it in there. All right, so we're right around 0.9 milliohms. Let's call it 1, no, 0.8. It's getting a little bit too far away to call it a solid 1. But it's 0.8. Let's make sure, again, the meter hasn't drifted. And still holding steady. So 0.8 for the EC3, better than the Deans. Now, what is probably one of the most common connectors, this is uh, an XT60. This is actually, out of all of these, this is the only one that's like an actual name brand. This is an AMAS brand connector. And by the way, I'm going to put links to all this stuff down in the description below if you want to buy them, if you want to get your own meter, whatever. What I like about these is these have that little uh, gray plastic thing that you put on the back that clicks on the back so you don't have to use the heat shrink tubing. I kind of like these, which is why I'm ponying up for the, the brand name on these guys. I don't think there's going to be a huge difference in quality, um, at least not what I've seen in any of these. So... It's a little bit better than the uh, EC3, about half a milliohm on that one. Let's check the other one. The, since we have both here. Pretty consistent, also half a milliohm. Again, let's make sure the meter hasn't drifted so that our data is good. Well, the meter is pretty solid. All right. Next up, EC5 connectors. You see a lot of these, particularly on larger RC LiPo packs, things of that nature. Let's see what we've got. Well, that's not good. 0 0.8, 0 0.7. Nope. I think this is pretty much exactly the same as uh, the quality XT60 connector, also half a milliohm. 
Once again, making sure the meter didn't drift. Well, nope. Okay, we're still good. Now, the big eight millimeter bullets. I'm just, again, just using the innards just to make the testing easier. This is, of course, a big EC8, which is what I actually use a lot of in my setups here. Point three. Can you do any better? Oh. Point two. So obviously, the bigger the connector, the lower the resistance. Point two mil ohms. That's that's pretty good. Now there's one more test that I kind of want to do. So this is the power brick that uh, I made initially uh, for a bunch of EC5 packs. Kind of curious to see how something that's been in use for a bit actually tests with a jumper. Uh, let's. Uh, Plug that in there and put this sideways so maybe the other camera shot can catch it. 3.7 mil ohms. That's going from one EC5 connector soldered to a piece of copper bus bar going into an EC5 connector through a piece of 10 gauge to another copper bus bar and to another connector. Individually, one of these connections ain't much, but they do add up. So there you go. Hopefully this information is useful to you. If you like these kinds of videos and of course progress on the electric turbo and VESCs or VESCs, it's going to be hard for me to say VESC, uh, definitely uh, subscribe, give me a thumbs up and uh, a lot more electric turbo stuff coming up. So I will catch you all on the next one. So is an icicle really like the ultimate murder weapon or is that just like a horrible cliche? I don't know. Just pulled it off my house. Thought I'd share. Better not get these things wet.